Caddis Maximus here, this time with a uh, short review of DeWalt's new extreme subcompact brushless reciprocating saw with a vertical hedge trimmer style motor. So we'll see how this works out. It's also kind of expensive. Uh, I got this at the Blue Box store and uh, it was on sale for $99. The shelf price was $139. So definitely a pricey little unit here. Get these straps off of here. I think this is something that Lowe's does, to tell you the truth, with these straps. And I, when they get to their distribution center, and uh, they oftentimes put them on way too tight, and it ends up tearing up the box. I've seen it at Lowe's some of these tool, those straps where they just totally, just totally, nearly cut the box in half. And. Uh, Sometimes it's just a little bit annoying. So let's go ahead and get uh, get in here. And there we go. We have a manual, the tool, and it even comes with a couple of blades apparently. Okay, packaging. Here's our. Oh, it, it comes with a four-inch metal cutting blade and a six-inch general-purpose wood blade. This tool is made in. Uh, it's Henshon China. It's made in China. Uh, the blades are made in the USA, but with Chinese steel. So, first thing they say, this was three pounds just for the tool by itself, and uh, it is kind of heavy. The big issue is, is the uh, non-brush, or the brush version, <laughs> non-brush, the brush version was a stick-style reciprocating saw on the 12-volt max, and uh, it was compact, but uh, it just was really lacking in power, and so that was a lot of the complaints, and so DeWalt has finally come out with a new version. It does have a trigger lock. It's not spring loaded, so you can just unlock it and use it like normal. Or you can lock it just so if you're putting this in a, I guess, a toolbox or something like that, that uh, this big exposed switch doesn't make it accidentally operate. So, with the complaints about the power, the Wild Head could either have made it longer, had a really fat motor, or what they chose here was to do a hedge trimmer style. And I think this is kind of an interesting throwback because the Milwaukee came out with the stick style or longitudinal re reciprocating saw on the Sawzall. And the big deal, the reason it became popular was because of that format. Cheaper like Sears, Powercraft, WEN, WEN tools were all hedge trimmer style reciprocating saws. And those were the cheaper versions. DeWalt did this so they could put a really big motor. And I'm sure this thing is going to just suck down the batteries like nothing else. But to keep it short, they did it vertically, and so that's probably one of the things is that this motor, this much reach on top, uh, may kind of interfere in some situations. Although it's maybe not quite as bad as I think it is. I will be doing a teardown of this when I'm, uh, but it'll be in the next video. So anyway, I'll do a quick cut here. Actually, I'll uh, end up just doing uh, one aggressive cut to really see if, uh, how much power it has. Uh, some of the things I'll, I have noticed on it, as we can see down there, there's a snap ring that retains at least, you know, this rotating collar, although it appears to be, have a cross pin in it. My thing is, is that it's an internal snap ring. The circle is smooth on the outside, but they're using it inappropriately on a, inter, or on a, uh, in a, where you should use an external snap ring, because the little lobes would end up sitting above the chuck and I think they were worried about it rotating and you catching your fingers on it but I did want to point that out that that may end up giving them trouble because now this snap ring is not held evenly around the entire circumference it's just held by an arc on the bottom and then the two little nubs at the top so I do worry about that the other thing that I uh, worry about or I shouldn't say worry about make sure you keep your fingers out of there is one they could have put a little bit of extra guarding maybe around the chuck just because your hands are so close and the shoe, we can see that there's quite, let me make sure that's locked, quite a bit of space from the fully extended position and the bottom edge of the shoe. So that means the shoe could have been moved back just a little bit more or preferentially, they could have just given you a little bit more space here. The other thing I was going to mention on this unit is it does have an LED, but it's disappointing. There we go, we turn off the light. So we can see the LED does shine through the V-groove, so it does help you. But this is the with my uh, just table lights off. And with the wall, you know, putting bright LEDs on some of their other cordless tools here, uh, I think it's just kind of disappointing that uh, this LED really isn't very bright. It 
with the light, as soon as I turn on the lights, you can barely see that thing. And I just wanted to show how dramatic that is. They should have put an array of like three of them down there or something, or had another one on top. So, and but that is something that could be modified. Maybe I'll do that in the teardown video. The kits, about $170. That includes one three amp. I have a two amp battery because I had bought individually the drill and the little impact driver um and two separate kits so they each had their own charger and two batteries so i bought this as a tool only once again for 99 bucks and really it's uh it's pretty expensive apparently this is the same thing as the the 20 volt atomic this the atomic uses a different you know controller to basically limit the amount of power that goes to the motor when they're running with the 20 volt battery and in case anybody's curious, the reason the 12 volt ones only have three prongs instead of four is it's still that extra prong there is for the, uh, thermal sensing in case the battery overheats. But on the 20 volt tools, it's a mid mid cell voltage sensing, and so uh, you have so many individual cells in the 20 volt line and you know the 60 volt line that they have additional monitoring to prevent the battery from potentially becoming unbalanced or some cells become more discharged than others. But with only three cells in these uh, two amp batteries, they don't really have to worry about that. The Waltz also really been camping and annoying people by only having up to a three amp instead of coming out with double thick uh, four and six amp batteries, which would certainly be nice. And the angle is a little bit more ergonomic, but it basically barely stands up. It's not designed to stand up on the battery. Um, and that strong angle means that when you have a blade in it, you can't, you would be inclined. And the blade clamp works pretty well, but you'd be inclined to want to set it down like that, but you can't because it always ends up on the blade. And it would be nice, or maybe being able to set it down just like that would have been really uh, pretty darn convenient. You may be able to with the six inch blade, but not with anything longer. And uh, they took the choice away for the belt clip. The whole molding and everything's there. They just didn't put in the little knot in the hole, which is kind of frustrating because they're kind of taking your choice away. Uh, it would be nice if they had just included that, especially for a tool that, um, you know, on sales, $100 just for the tool only. They could have included the provision for that in the belt clip because there be, would be many situations where people would like to have that available. Even though they still do have the provision where you can put a lanyard back there, that's not quite the same as a belt clip. And uh, even though it weighs three pounds, there I'm sure would be plenty of people who would appreciate that. You can still put one in here. You just have to drill that out and realize that it's only going in the plastic when you put in the screw. So the hardest thing with these little saws, especially one-handed, is uh, preventing the blade from wanting to jam and then having the saw hammer against the surface uh, with the stuck blade because that's really what can blow out the gearboxes on anything. It's always a little bit difficult. Anyway, we've got a uh, 6x6. It's actually surfaced four sides so it'd be five and a half inches across this is a carbide tooth on three tpi diablo pruning blade we're, i'm not going to stand on it but we're going to see if it can actually do some real relatively real cutting when you need to in a pinch and we'll start off easy here if we can get the Quite a bit of uh, cutting right there. All right, let's finish this out. That was 
not fun. My goodness. So the verdict is one, it's uncomfortable to cut six inch dimensional uh, Douglas fir pretty dry um, with this saw, but it's actually, if you had a really good handsaw and the appropriate amount of space, you'd probably get through that in about the same amount of time as this little thing, but it did it. I was actually pretty surprised because that's a pretty aggressive cut. The whole purpose of the carbide teeth is that they always cut aggressively motor and everything can handle it and so now i'm understanding really the 20 volt because this is such a high amount of draw but this battery right now it sat for just about a minute or two so it's really heat soaking uh this battery is 90 degrees something like that it's pretty darn warm also this was freshly charged for this uh, video and that one cut used one bar of battery so this really is, it has the power, but they're, <laughs> now they're making it hard on your batteries, which means they really need to come out with the uh, four and six amp double stack ones. So there'd be twice as many cells will be operating in parallel and you won't be having uh, that kind of discharge current right there. That probably was a sustained, I mean, you could kill this battery in 10 or 10 minutes on a two amp, this little thing easy, 10 to 15 minutes of runtime. And on the three amp, that might give you 20 or so minutes. So, but I'm surprised. Uh, I didn't totally stand on it. Um, it's a little bit awkward. I found that it was just too hard to try to keep the shoe against the surf surface. There was just, it's so lightweight. There's no way to prevent some back and forth motion, like on a more, on you know, a full size corded sawzall or even cordless one. Um, so I just had to realize that I, just that bashing was going to destroy is what destroys reciprocating saws so i just had to pull back and just keep its distance and then uh, just keep it up full speed so the blade wouldn't want to uh, jam up and i could kept get on here and it bogged down as you could too and uh wow it actually did not stall and that's about as heavy a kind of cutting as i would think you would really do with this type of saw if you need more cutting power than that then yeah you're using full size high power stuff so enough of this long review, and uh, despite some of its faults, it would it's kind of a shame that the the Wald is, I mean, they're still supporting their 12-volt line, but it would be nice if they uh, just, you know, just put a little bit more effort into it. Like the LEDs would have been better to have them more, much more upgraded, considering so many of your other cordless tools have really bright LEDs and uh, get into the game with the high power or the higher power batteries. Anyway, I'm gonna say one more time, that is actually kind of brutish. That <laughs> really uh, had a surprising amount of power. And even the gearbox is what's heat soaking here and not the motor. Anyway, I really appreciate everybody who's been watching and subscribing. And if you haven't subscribed, please do. Until next time, Caddis Maximus out. Bye.